Good evening. Uh, this opening meeting of this open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's order of March 12, 2020, due to the pandemic. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirements of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies, of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us. For this meeting, uh, we are convening by the video conference uh, Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note, it, note that the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and then take care, not, be sure to take care not to share, screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public's encouraged to follow along using the post and agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda and after they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite members to provide any comments or questions or motion. Please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. If members wish to engage in colloquially or historical representations, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Uh, <clears throat> due to the size of my laptop screen, which I'm still in this laptop, I haven't gotten off it yet, I may not be able to see all the members at once. So if someone has raised their hand and I've not noticed, I hereby request that Tara Bradley or uh, Annie LaCourt please bring this to my attention. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call. So I will uh, proceed to take attendance uh, and uh, please members, uh, when I call your name, uh, respond uh, indicating that you're present. <clears throat> Grant Gibeon. Here. Uh, Shane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. Micaiah Healy. Here. Brian Beck. Here. Lee Fedaria. He's coming a little late. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Here. Eileen uh, Crawford. Here. Daryl Harmer. Here. Any LaCourt. She's coming late too. Okay. Yeah, Alan Jones. Here. George Koser. Bill Keller. Here. Alan Tassi. Here. Wanda Nascimento. Here. Christine Dessler. Here. Dean Carmen. Here. David McKenna. Here. Tara Bradley. Here. Thank you. <laughs> so have a quorum. We can proceed with the meeting. Um, first, uh, let's uh, deal with the minutes from the uh, last meeting. Tara, can you put those up, please? I received comments from Al Tosti and I have incorporated those below. Are you sharing your screen? Uh, I believe I am. It might take a minute. Can, can anyone see it now? I can. I, I, can, see I can see it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Uh, what were the comments that Al had? Um, so on number six and number eight. So, um, any uh, questions or comments on the minutes as amended? And Charlie? Yes. It's Brian. 
um, I'm not sure. I'm I'm looking at the parking district budget. I'm not sure what it means. The the addition. I think what it means is that we endorse the the uh, spending, but as you pointed out at the meeting, um, in, the, in the presentation, uh, they don't make enough money this year to fund the expenses. But you're taking money from the fund. Oh, back. I see. I see. I, I take it back. But as you read the whole thing, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the minutes? A motion on the minutes is in order. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, Grant Gibbion. Yes. Payne Mundell. Yes. John, John Ellis isn't here. Uh, John Ellis here yet? No. No. Okay. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Arif Padaria. Sophie Migliazzo. Jonathan Wallach is not here. Jonathan, no, Jonathan's here. Jonathan? Yes. Uh, Shailene? Yes. Daryl? Abstain. Andy LaCourt's not here. Um, Alan Jones? Alan Jones? Yes. George isn't here. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Juan de Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Okay. And Dave McKenna. Yes. Thank you. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13. 13 in favor, two abstentions. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So um, a couple of uh, just comment. I hope that we can get all of our work finished tonight. And if we can, we won't have to have a meeting on Wednesday. We're um, under a lot of pressure to get the um, uh, Finance Committee report done. I want to thank Al Tassi for the work that he's putting in and he in a moment of madness, volunteered to uh, get involved about three weeks ago, and he's been uh, he's been working closely with Tara. So uh, thank you very much for that, Al. Um, you probably won't do that again, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate the uh, tremendous effort. Um, I have a question for um, Christine. Christine, uh, are you going to release the Finance Committee handbook prior to town meeting? The handbook is done and on our website. Um, oh, I can, so you can announce it. You can announce it, yeah. The only thing that, that's left to do is put it in a PDF form. But other than that, um, it is uh, done. As far, as far as the working group is concerned, it, it is the first edition of the Arlington Finance Committee handbook is done. Well, congratulations to the entire group on that, that effort. I mean, it's a, it's a, I think it's a great piece of work. Um, when you say it's on our website, you mean on the SharePoint website? On the SharePoint side, yeah, I'm right. sorry. Okay, well, SharePoint. what we'd like to do is get it in a PDF form, and then we can post it on the town website on, in the Finance Committee section. Okay. That's, that's doable. And I, I, I want to take this opportunity to to tell everybody on the committee that as you read it or refer to it or going, going forward, if, if you have additions, changes, you think we should add this or take out that, um, let us know, we're gonna put it on, um, uh, we're gonna keep track of that so that whoever is working on addition two, whenever that is, will have that information. So we'll, in the Finance Committee report, we'll, we'll include some comments on that, as well as on the uh, operations research report on the uh, um, uh, waste and uh, trash and recycling uh, budget and costs and savings and so forth that Al went through a couple of, couple of meetings ago. So th thank you very much for that, Christine and Al. Um, I think those are the only comments that I have tonight. Um, so let's do, um, we did the minutes and we, um, so now we're ready for um, Warren article number 11, domestic partnerships. Is Mr. Meeks here? 
I'm here, um, and also Susan uh, from the uh, Rainbow Commission. Thank you. So, um, are you, do you have a prepared presentation, Mr. Meeks? Um, I, I think Susan was going to start. Okay. I can Susan, start. Please go right ahead. Yeah. Um, just quick background, the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission submitted warrant article 11 to town meeting because it strongly agrees with the purpose and intent of the town's new domestic partnership bylaw. Um, basically recognizing the diverse composition of people who live in Arlington and recognizing that the perpetuation of the traditional meaning of family can exclude a segment of the town's population by depriving them of recognition and de denying them certain rights that should be afforded to people who share their hearts and lives. Um, the articles needed to more clearly define the parameters of domestic partnerships in Arlington and the administrative processes related to them. It's also needed to more clearly specify the employment benefits afforded to town employees in registered domestic partnerships. As a matter of background, I'd like to note that the Rainbow Commission also endorsed the warrant article at the 2021 town meeting that created the town's relatively new domestic partnership bylaw. Um, Amos will be taking the lead in answering your questions. I'm able to offer additional clarity. I will. Um, I don't know if you had an opportunity to review the memo that we prepared um, ahead of time, which hopefully will answer uh, most of your questions. Tara, would you put that memorandum up, please? Thank you. Has, has everyone had a chance to review this memorandum? I know it's hard to answer that question when everybody's got a mute microphone, um, but rhetorically it was the question I wanted to ask. So um, perhaps uh, Mr. Meeks, you can just take us briefly through this. Sure. Um... So, sorry, I'm trying to pull it up on my computer so I can see it. Um, I think this just lays out some of the background. Uh, so since the uh, domestic partnership bylaw went into effect in January of this year, um, there have been three registrations of domestic partnerships. Um, the fee to file them is sort of uh, equivalent to the fee to file a marriage license um, set at $30. Um, I think um, I, I'm very curious to hear the committee's um, input on this, but I think the main uh, impact uh, of the proposed changes for this year um, are related to uh, paid employment benefits for town employees who are in domestic partnerships. And this is basically trying to extend um, the benefits that are already given to people for um, bereavement, sick, and parental leave for uh, spouses or family is sending those to domestic partners. Um, and so in terms of the cost of this, um, you know, it's going to depend on the employee. It sounds like the main um, issue where this would occur additional costs would be in um, positions that would need to be backfilled uh, for public safety, such as police, fire, or DPW during certain seasons. Um, but uh, so far, none of the people who have registered domestic partnerships in Arlington are um, town employees. Um, and to, to be perfectly clear, um, this none of the changes uh, would extend healthcare benefits to town employees and their, or, the, or to their domestic partners. Um, this is actually uh, sort of prohibited as a matter of state law. Um, and so uh, that would have to be settled at the state level before it is something that we would be allowed to do as a town. Thank you. <clears throat> Does the committee have any questions on this um, article? Raise your hand or, yes, Al Tosti. Yeah, um, <clears throat> just to explain our position, uh, the Finance Committee is not making recommendations on the, uh, the sort of policy merits of domestic partnerships. Uh, that's up to the Board of Selectmen and the I'll recommend in the town meeting to decide. What we are concerned about is cost. Um, and uh, how much is this gonna cost the town? 
uh, so obviously, uh, those three elements um, could theoretically cost the town money. We just don't have no have no clue how much. Now, wh what is the state law or statute uh, that you refer to <clears throat> about health insurance, employee health insurance? Um, it's a, a case, uh, it's called Connors versus Boston um, from I think the 90s when domestic partnerships were sort of first uh, being put into practice. Um, I'm not a lawyer, I um, can't explain the details or point to the specific um, statute, um, but uh, I can certainly get you that information afterwards if you'd like to hear more, or um, I think Googling that would probably bring up some information. Okay, so it's not a statute, it's a, it's a court case. It's a court case that I, I assume, I mean, I assume it references some statute um, in state law. Okay. Um, Sophie? My, oh, I'm sorry, uh, you have more? No, uh, it, it was my understanding also that uh, the uh, Group Insurance Commission uh, does not provide for uh, spousal benefits and, unless you're married. Um, so, so that could add an extra area of protection. I guess that's it for me for now. Thank you. Sophie? Yes, thank you. Just for clarification, so um, the presentation mentioned that none of the three that registered in town are town employees, but if somebody yeah. to register in Somerville or some other town and they are an employee, they can still get the benefit, correct? Uh, Yes, I believe that's correct. As currently written, um, people do not need to register in the town in which they reside. So residents of Arlington could register a domestic partnership in Somerville or Cambridge. And um, this, uh, the bylaw has a clause uh, that would recognize those domestic partnerships and extend the same rights to them. Are there any other questions? Jane? Thank you. Um, so I, I'm just returning to the health insurance question, and I know that well, none of the folks that have registered so far are town employees, but there was something in the bylaw, the proposed bylaw, that talked about, you know, nothing shall impose liability upon a partner for health or medical expenses, with the exception of medical insurance contributions. So I'm just trying to understand this is the case, but can you just sort of compare that to the language of the, what, I guess, what's the goal of that language? I think it's section seven. B, which talks about medical insurance. Yes, I, I believe that uh, was sort of added by the, the lawyers that we've been working with in sort of an abundance of caution. Um, I can, if you want more details, I'm, I'm happy to um, get more information from them. Um, yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just thinking about. Yeah, and I think this is I mean, more about, about protecting a, a domestic partner from health or medical expenses of their partner. Um, okay. Is that, so I, I don't think this would involve the town at, at, at all, is my understanding. Again, I'm not a lawyer. It's to protect domestic. Can you make that a full screen with uh, so, um Tara? Thank you, that's better, yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, if there's a court <laughs> case interpreting a statute, um, certainly that would control versus a town bylaw, but if there's anything more that you have on that, again, I'm just thinking about it from a finance committee perspective about like what theoretically could be a cost to the town, which I don't expect would be significant, but just to, if there's anything more there, that would be helpful. Thank you. I can follow up and I'll, I'll um, send you some information later this week. Thank you, Amos. I appreciate it. So um, any other questions here? For either of our guests, 
So uh, I have a question. If you go back to that um, last uh, page that you had up there, Tara, please. Thank you. So um, it seems to me, reading that paragraph, that, um, that that paragraph exempts anyone in the domestic partner relationship for liabilities from one of the domestic partners with the sole exception of medical insurance contributions assumed by the city or the school department employee who's a member of the domestic partnership. How, how do you interpret that, Mr. Meeks? Um, again, not a lawyer, um, have not had much discussion on this part before. My understanding would be that, um, this means if you're, if a domestic partner gets sick, um, and, you know, goes into medical debt or something because of that, um, debt collectors could not, uh, hound the other domestic partner, um, to pay that off. And then the second part, um, medical insurance contributions assumed by a city or school department employee who is a member of the domestic partnership. Um, I think that would mean that the, the partner is responsible or could be responsible for paying um, medical insurance contributions. Um, if someone is getting their medical, if someone is getting their insurance through the town. Thank you. Um, again, I would, uh, I'll reach out to the lawyers that um, we've been working with and get uh, more clarification on that. And um, certainly I think all of this, you know, um, if this ends up being a problem, we can certainly remove it. Christine, you have a question. You're mute, you're mute. I have more of a, a statement. I think I agree with Mr. Meeks's interpretation of Section 7B. I feel like that second clause protects the town to an extent that if we can uh, require some contribution, that section enables the town to be able to, to do that. Um, so I don't see that as a problem. Uh, for the town, but maybe a uh, benefit for the town. And um, since I have the airtime right now, I would move uh, because it seems like there's uh, little financial impact on the town or very speculative financial impact. I would move that we take no position on this article. I would second that. So <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to take no position on the article. So for uh, your information, um, um, uh, Susan and, and um, Amos, um, as, as Altasi mentioned before, um, we would not necessarily support or oppose this article on a policy basis, purely on a financial basis. So if there is no uh, financial impact, we we'll just have no report. Whereas if we thought there was a financial impact, we would report on it. So um, Christine Deschel has made and Brian has seconded the motion for uh, no position and no report on this uh, article. Is there any further, are there any further uh, questions or comments by the members? Okay, seeing none, we'll take a vote. Grant Gibby. Yeah, a positive vote means no report, no position. Grant Gibbion? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. John Ellis is here, too. Yes. Oh, John? Yes. Yep, I'm here. Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl, he's not here. Yes. Oh, Daryl's here. Okay. 
Maybe you did abstain, right? Okay. Um, sorry, Daryl. I was looking at the wrong line. Is Annie LaCourt here? No. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Yeah. Ian Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. Uh, it's a vote is unanimous that the Finance Committee will not take a position on this article. Thank you, Amos. Thank you, Susan. Um, have a very good evening. Thank you very much for your time. <clears throat>
spreadsheet that is automatically generated from these Google Forms as a way of, of uh, providing a link to a pest management um, professional uh, who is applying uh, SAGRs on property. Um, and we understand from um, the Board of Health that data collection is already occurring, uh, that uh, resident complaint reports are being recorded, that the inspection uh, reports from inspections are being recorded and mapped already into a GIS layer of the town database. So we anticipate that with a um, with a spreadsheet that can easily be just added into the existing systems and there would be minimal development costs. Um, as far as the uh, personnel for this activity, when I spoke with um, uh, Christine Bongiorno, she indicated and her memo indicates that, um, that these activities can be accomplished within current staffing um, requirements or current staffing abilities. And then uh, the other one is education. Again, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that it, that it uh, went into the workflow and, um, and it's education that, that would be handed out, you know, just a piece of, of education, educational material during those three activities of um, uh, licensing, permitting, and um, and uh, licensing, permitting, and uh, the other one I mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, and in this case, again, uh, when I mentioned it to Christine, she indicated that they're already doing this, uh, and in fact. Um, the recent Board of Health, oh rats, um, fantastic webinar, by the way, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it, um, uh, that they produced on, on March 31st, um, is, uh, was done within current capacity for uh, producing a webinar like that and uh, presenting it to the public. Uh, this material, of course, will be available going forward on a link and can be at this point is a no cost kind of educational material that the town can use. Thank you. I'm willing to take any questions and Carrie Teal is also here uh, willing to, to answer any questions you have. Thank you, uh, Ms. Crowder. <clears throat> so um, do we have any questions for either uh, Mr. Teal or Ms. Crowder? I see no hands. Oh, Al Tosti. You mentioned a specific anti uh, anticoagulant uh, poison. Yes. Why is this so much worse or different than other types of poison that might have been used over the years um, to either human health or animal health? Um, well, as, as we're aware, some of these poisons, the um, uh, actual effect in the environment often does not become obvious right away. DDT, which is an example of that, uh, it too had a, a particular threat toward bald eagles. These second generation anticoagulants happen to be a, a type of poison that are very good at accumulating in tissues. They go, they stay, they, they last a long time. In fact, they last about uh, almost a year, some of them, versus a month uh, relative to the earlier form of anticoagulants. So warfarin is an example of first generation anticoagulant. Um, the industry uh, tried to engineer uh, certain other very toxic um, uh, features into a second generation of rodenticides and um, the 
upshot of that is that not only are they more toxic immediately, they last much, much longer in the system. They do not kill right away. A rodent will uh, eat it and then eat again and eat again. One, only one serving is enough to kill the rodent, but they continue to eat. So they kind of become poison bombs for anything that is then, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the, up the food chain. So uh, any foxes, coyotes, uh, eagles, owls, anything that happens to get a hold, cats, dogs, anything that happens to get a hold of one of these um, poisoned rodents gets quite a bit more poison than other forms of poison. Thank you. Al Jones. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just also wanted to point out, and, and uh, I think Ms. Crowder could probably uh, find specific references, but a number of scientific references have shown that natural predators are in the long run are a much more cost, of, cost effective way to control rodent populations. The, the poisons just sort of, you know, keep things going in a steady state, but if you have a good healthy population of uh, both, you know, raptors and coyote and things like that, it, it's sort of a long-term solution. So in, in the long run, I'm pretty confident it'd be a financial savings. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Any other questions? So um, Ms. Crowder, Mr. Teal, am I right in concluding that um, <clears throat> told us that there's minimal or no cost to the um, uh, education campaign and the reporting. Is that correct? That's correct. And you have taken out of the article um, that which may the, the which might have had a cost impact because it's controlled by the state. I'm not that's sure that that's that that's the part that is uh, has the most cost impact. But um, but yes, it was taken out because of uh, we the the need to kind of approach it in a slight, with a slightly different strategy. Thank you. So, um, Al Tassi. Uh, <clears throat> because of the lack of uh, significant cost, if any cost in this, uh, I would move that the Finance Committee take no position on this Second. article. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded, uh, no position on this article. Um, so um, we'll move to a vote. Any further questions, comments? Grant Gibeon? Yes. Kane Blundell? Yes. John, De John Ellis? Yes. Makaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Shailene uh, Crawford Prokris? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Andy LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Juan de Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. It's the unanimous vote by the committee. Uh, your, your home, Scott Free. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you very much for your vote and your encouragement. Thank you. So um, next on the agenda, reconsideration of insurance and other budgets for final adjustments. We have any guests here or is that entirely internal with uh, uh, Alan Jones? Just us. Uh, actually, I think Bill Keller has Bill the- Keller. Okay, Bill. Sorry. Um, yes, so uh, we need to we need to revote the uh, insurance tax uh, the insurance budget that was approved a couple of weeks ago, and the reason is is because um, the insurance offsets for the rink, rec, and water and sewer are slightly more for health insurance than originally budgeted. So that changes the uh, the offsets, uh, which increase, but in fact, as a result, there's a slight decrease, four thousand seven hundred and forty-eight dollars less um, on the budget line. So 
let me just put this into words. Um, we'll be going, if we approve this, we'll be going from the budget that was approved by the Finance Committee of 21,216,786 down to $21,212,038. As a result of the um, uh, of the increase in the uh, offsets, so I make a motion that we approve uh, this new insurance budget amount. Second. Second. Are there any questions, uh, Alan Jones? Did I see your hand go up? Yeah, well, I just wanted to point out that that's the um, group health component after offsets, but the insurance budget also includes uh, workers' comp, uh, liability, and property, and their various offsets. So, you know, I guess um, what I would suggest is that we vote for the total of both of those, which is twenty one million seven hundred seventy two thousand three hundred thirteen. So that's the twenty one million two twelve oh thirty eight for group health, and. 560,275 for for the other ones. Totally like 21. Uh, may you interject, yeah, please? Um, so I think what we're doing here, um, Alan, is suggesting that we combine the health insurance budget with the liability insurance budget. We voted these separately as a committee, um, but now I guess because of the, the way the master uh, spreadsheet is developed, they're going to come back together, so it is a different number. If you, unless you break out, unless you break out the um, the liability insurance number, as we did when we voted these budgets two weeks ago. What what is liabilities? Workers' comp, indemnity. There's some other insurance uh, component. It's not. Uh, it's it, the bulk of it's health insurance, but there's other numbers too. Unemployment compensation insurance, which is the official liability, and property insurance. This makes up the liability insurance appropriation. Mm -hmm. uh, that budget was uh, voted on and approved and um, it's not part of the group health insurance on the budget books. Uh, agreed, so, I'm uh, just saying that I, I believe the appropriation is the total of all of those for budget 26. Only the group health has changed. No, I'm sorry, I don't follow you, Alan. Well, the, the total appropriation from taxpayer dollars for all of the insurance mm -hmm. is 21 million seven hundred seventy-two thousand three hundred thirteen. Correct. That's the bottom line if you add the two group health and liability together. Okay. And I, and I believe that's the number we should vote because otherwise we wouldn't have a vote for the other ones. Okay. So we're really combining two things into one, which is fine. We're making an adjustment uh, to was originally budgeted for health insurance because of the change in the offsets. And we're combining the liability insurance line with the health insurance line into a master, a single uh, insurance budget. Is that right? Right. So I guess I, I'd like to move the taxation total for the entire insurance budget to $21,772,313. And if you look at the long range plan, that's the number that's used there also. So, so um... Bill, you made the original motion. Do you accept uh, Alan's thoughts as a permanent amendment? I do, yes. I Good. second. And it's been seconded. Okay. So um, any questions about this? these changes? Seeing none, um, let's then vote on the insurance modifications. So would you give us that number one more time, Al? Twenty one million seven hundred seventy two thousand three hundred and thirteen. Thank you. Seeing no more questions or comments, we move to a vote. Grant Gibeon. Vote yes. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Nikaya. Yes. Brian. Yes. Arif. Yes. Sophie? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Jaylene? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Alan? Yes. Yes. Is George Cosa here? No. Bill Keller? Bill? Uh, yes. Altasti? Yes. 
Wanda? Yes. Christine? Yeah. Dean? Yes. David? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Alan. Uh, the next item is the uh, Commission on Disability Budget Vote. Um, Sophie, are you prepared to speak on that? And do we have any representatives of the committee here this evening? Uh, no, um, I didn't actually specifically invite any. I think I, I talked to them and said we would, I don't think there's any uh, debate. I think we're, we're gonna move forward. I'd just like to give a bit of history for the, for the new people and a reminder uh, before we vote on it. Okay. That's fine and give, give a bit of history for the old people too. <laughs> So um, just a reminder that what, what intrigued me about this was um, when I asked for some detail on the 25,000 and then on follow-up, um, we were given some budget information. And when I spoke with the town and I spoke with the Disability Commission, they both started with a bit of history that um, the budget used to be 3,000 in fiscal year 2020 after uh, some commissioners on the Disability Commission advocated for the commission to get a larger budget, um, it was increased in, uh, to 25,000. And that's the agreement with the Finance Committee and with the town because there's a law that actually allows disability commissions to be given by towns or allocated the fees that result from handicapped parking fines. Um, the town at the time didn't actually want to, to mess with allocating those fees and splitting up things that go into the general fund. And so the agreement with the town was since those fees amount to about 25,000, that going forward, the appropriation would be 25,000. So it's not directly tied to the fees, but it's based on what those fees were at the time that they negotiated this with us. Um, since that fiscal year 2020 though, um, the town's full-time ADA coordinator has left um, and, has, and Jill now is in that position, but she manages three commissions, not just the ADA and Disability Commission. And the advocates that were on the Disability Commission have also left the commission. So you have a, a, a Disability Commission with a, a lot of new members and who haven't been quite sure what to do with um, this, this allocation that they've received. And so they've been depending on Jill, um, who's also busy with a lot of other commissions. So my question had been when we saw that the commission was paying for ADA training for the town and also ADA software for the town and ADA, ADA accessibility uh, fixes to buildings. Um, I just questioned whether that was an appropriate uh, allocation instead of putting it in operating budgets or capital planning. And the town's position was that really it's being, the work's being done, um, the training's being done, so it shouldn't really matter which budget it comes out of, whether it's appropriations or operations or capital planning, as long as it's being spent on that. And that really nobody should be telling commissions uh, how to spend their allocation, right, their appropriation, that it's for them to decide, and if this is what they want to spend it on, then that's what they spend it on. So then I also spoke with the Disability Commission, who said that, again, um, they're all fairly new to all this and new with numbers, and just a reminder for the committee that a majority of the commissioners on the Disability Committee have to have a disability to be on there. So these are, they're, you know, they have, um, they're new, they're new to this and they also are dealing with um, their own disabilities. And they would have been interested in spending the money in other ways, um, such as studies for the town or updates, um, other updates instead of spending it on these items for the town. But because they didn't know what to do, they relied on recommendations from the town. So, um, all, so the Disability Commission agrees to have paid for all these ADA items, training, fixing access, because it's important to them and they didn't know what else to do. Um, so I think um, what I'd like to propose is that the commission consider uh, talking with them about having a liaison maybe for a year or two to helping the disability commission figure out what how budgets work. Um, and where maybe certain things could be coming from operations or capital planning 
Um, I don't know if that's appropriate or not. I think the uh, finance committee had an arts and culture liaison at one point for that committee when they with their large budget. So I don't know if that's something we would consider for the disability commission. Um, but otherwise, the idea is that we've already agreed that going forward, they get an approach appropriation of 25,000. So I would suggest that's what we move in and do. Thank you, Sophie. Um, Al Alan Jones, your hands up. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, any oh, go ahead, Sophie. Thank you. Um, the Disability Commission did tell me there is a 10 year plan uh, and study that's done for the town for addressing accessibility issues. However, um, they don't quite, at least the Disability Commission is a bit lost as to what to do with that 10 year plan because they have been told that the numbers in it are just not accurate as far as what the costs would be to fix things. Um, it, and so they're a bit at a loss what to do with this plan because the numbers in it of costs are not accurate. Okay, so um, thank you, Sophie. You're welcome. Any questions for Sophie on this? So I'd like to make a comment. Let me see if I can just summarize what I think I heard you say, uh, Sophie, that first of all, um, the uh, Disability Commission is uh, entitled to a certain amount of funds by right um, coming from various disability uh, uses and fees in the town under state law. And the $25,000 is an amount that was uh, this was determined to be in, in order to facilitate this without spending a lot of monitoring and measuring money, et cetera. Secondly, um, that the Disability Commission has the right to spend this money in any way that they see fit for the benefit of disability, dis disabled persons. It's not necessarily something that is governed by town management or other organizations. And then the third thing is that um, uh, you're, you're suggesting that there should be a finance committee liaison to the disability uh, committee to um, assist them in the planning of their um, future expenditures. Is that, is that, and, and the fourth thing is that you're recommending that we support the $25,000. Is that a summary? Yes, correct. The, the idea of the liaison is also because the ADA coordinator that the town just posted for a new ADA coordinator that will be full time, but it'll be a new person who won't be familiar with our budgeting process of, of advocating for certain things to come out of operations or capital planning instead of the commission's um, right. budget. Well, that, that, the, uh, that would be a sort of a volunteer, yeah. a voluntary suggestion on the part of the um, liaison or, or whomever. Right. Uh, so given that summary, are there any questions that anybody has? So Sophie, would you make, I don't see any questions, would you make, um, please for the um, acceptance of the twenty-five thousand dollars and for the uh, determination of a that we that we adopt a liaison to the disability commission. So yes, so I make a motion that we um, approve the twenty-five thousand dollar appropriation to the disability commission and propose a liaison to the disability commission. Should they want one? Is there a second? Second. second. So it's been moved and seconded. Any additional questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. Um, that, that, that was a very good um, report. So he's, um, Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Micaiah Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Jaylene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Bill Keller? Bill Keller? Uh, yes. Al Costi? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Yeah. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the vote is unanimous. 
So uh, Sophie, since you've done such a good job here, um, could I ask uh, two things? One is that you write up a small paragraph for the um, Finance Committee report on this matter. We'll figure out where to put it. And uh, secondly, I, I don't know if you're interested in volunteering to be the um, liaison to the Disability Committee or Commission. Is that something you'd be interested in? Or if they'll have me. <laughs> Good, consider it done. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, article number 63, Harry Barber. Uh, Al Tassi, do you want to re raise that article? Uh, all right. Uh, you know, there's two ways we could handle the Harry Barber program. And, and I just wanted to throw this out. Um, it's $7,500. We've been appropriating it uh, since Harry Barber was a pup. And uh, uh, we do it each year. It always ends up on the consent agenda. I'm wondering if we should vote no action on the article and fit the Council on Aging slash Harry Barber program uh, into the committees and commissions? Um, th that would be perfectly accessible with the chair, but I think um, you'd have to make a motion. Um, I would say first make the motion to revise the committees and commissions and uh, put the $7,500 in there, and then we'll take a vote on no action on the, uh, our, on the article um, 63, and then that would, that would settle the matter for future, future town report, uh, town uh, finance committee reports and town meetings. Is that acceptable to you? That sounds fine. So moved. Seconded. Okay, so it was moved and seconded. Uh, first of all, to put uh, Harry Barber program for seventy five hundred dollars into the um, committees and commissions article, which is what article is that? Uh, Al. Fifty six. Fifty six. Okay. Now, since it's not listed, would there be any scope issue on the warrant? Uh, good question. Let's see. I mean, all, all the committees are listed there by name. Does it say, or take any action there too? It's yes. The paragraph above it, it says, or any other committees or commissions. Okay. So I, I would think that would cover it. I think yep. so. Okay, so we'll, um, so the first motion is to put the $7,500 into article 56. Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Kaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Shailene Pokris? Yes. Derek Palmer? Yes. Annie McCourt? Yes. Uh, Bill Keller? Yes. Hey. Al Tosti? Yes. Juan de Nascimento? Yes. Uh, Christine Deschler? Yes. Ian Carmen and David McKenna? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so that's unanimous. And then it is no action on, um, on, um, on um, Article um, 63. So since that's a no action without, um, I'm going to just ask that, um, is there anyone who would, who, who wishes to not vote for new, no action on Article 63? So hearing none, we'll, yeah. assume, we'll assume that this is a successful roll call vote since everybody voted to put the money in um, Article 56. And Mr. Chairman, I just yes, suggest that Alan adds a, a paragraph or a comment underneath just explaining uh, that funds for this article are, are appropriated under article, whatever it is. Uh, well, uh, what, Al, uh, since this is your motion, maybe you should write the R, write the comment. I was trying to palm it off to Alan, the other one. <laughs> I, I could do it, but, but it's not in the budget spreadsheets. It's in the you know, printed, it's in Appendix A. You know, we don't, we don't vote committees and commissions as a separate the, the, two, the, two but, owls, the two owls are going to work that out. We have an owl squared. Right. But it, it, if we voted committees and commissions, I think we need to add 7,500 to it, don't we? We did. We just voted for that. Okay. We just voted to move. Okay. Got it. So yeah, two, we just did two votes. We okay. put 7,500 into 56, and we voted no action on 63. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so Dean Carmen. 
I'm sorry, go ahead, Al. Yeah, uh, Tara, if you could just add comment after that uh, uh, Harry Barber program article 63 and say comment, uh, monies for the, under this article are appropriated under the committees and commissions article. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, I could palm it off on somebody. Uh, um, Dean, Dean Farmer, did you have your hand up a minute ago? I did. I I think we should just to close the loop. We should probably check in with the comptroller to make sure that it wasn't like I'm assuming the Harry Barber fund, Harry Barber appropriation comes out of the general fund. But if you think about our warrant articles, some of them are standalone articles because they come out of a different fund, right? So like the capital budget is, is the capital borrowing fund. Um, there's special revenue funds that we appropriate separately. Probably should just make sure there isn't like a mechanical issue there. I'm just looking under the uh, Warner or the uh, vote from last year. And it's uh, said some to be raised by general tax and expended under the direction of the town manager. Well, in this case, it'd be expended under the direction of the uh, Council on Aging, but. Yeah, I mean, everything, a lot of our stuff is general tax, but I, I, I don't know. I, I just wanted to make sure we didn't like. Well, there's a corollary question there that you, you raise, which is um, that we carry money over from year to year in some of these uh, warrant articles. And since we had the pandemic, uh, there may still be money in some fund there for Harry Barber. Um, so I think that, that that might be a good idea to check with um, Ida to see if there's a, um, if, if that's possible. So what article, is it Harry Barber, what article number? Um, that's uh, 63. And what articles, committees and commissions? 56. I'll send the email right now. Okay, so let me just, um, I'm gonna, I'm going to ask that the committee re, um, reconsider the, our, the vote we just quickly took with no roll call on 63 and say uh, the vote being that, that if, it is, if it is possible that, um, that we can shift to um, Article 56, then we vote no action. Okay. In other words, I'm, what I'm trying to do is uh, make sure that we vote in a way that we don't have to come back and have another meeting. Uh, How about if we add, if at the point of the determination of the chair, there is a problem with the prior vote, uh, that the $7,500 be appropriated under Article 63? That's, that's a good way to put it. Uh, and otherwise, it's no action. Okay. I think I'm going to take a roll call vote on that, just since it's sort of a little complicated. Uh, Grant? Yes. Shane? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Makaya Healy? Yep. Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Louis Padaria? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Kayleen? She had to leave early. Daryl. Oh, Shailene left? Yep. Um, Annie LaCourt. She left. A A Annie will be, uh, took a break for a minute. Okay. Alan Jones. Yes. Um, Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tasti. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yeah. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's a unanimous vote. So uh, basically, uh, between the two votes, we will either allocate uh, the 7,500 to Article 56, or if it turns out that's uh, mechanically not possible or improper in some way, as determined by the chair and the um, town comptroller, we'll uh, change the no action vote on 63 to $7,500. Um, okay, review of all budgets. So, um, 
Alan Jones, have you got all, all the information you need from the various members when you sent the buddy, uh, oh, to Al Tosti, you have your hand up? Oh, I, since we were thinking about things that could happen after tonight, I was wondering if it's an appropriate time for Dean to make his usual uh, motion. I was gonna ask him for that later, but now's as good a time as any. Am I up? Yep, you're up, go ahead. All right, so I move that if in the course of putting together the 2022 Finance Committee report to town meeting, um, it's determined that there are small clerical or administrative errors in balancing out the reports. The Finance Committee grants to the Vice Chair, Alan Jones, with the consent of the Chair, Charlie Foskett, the authority to adjust or balance out those um, variances administratively without needing a, another vote of the committee. Second. Second. <clears throat> so it's moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Okay, so um, I'm going to call this the elastic clause vote. Uh, Grant Gibeon? Yes. Jane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Ty Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Reef Padaria? Oh, yes. Uh, Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Uh, Annie's not here. Um, Alan Jones? Yes. Uh, Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Juan de Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. Thank you. That vote is unanimous. So um, going back then to the question of the review of all the budgets, did you, um, are, are you satisfied that you got all the information back that you needed, um, Alan Jones? Uh, yes, um, Bill Keller and I and Julie Wayman have been going back and forth with the insurance and believe we got that. Uh, Al Tosti came back with some you know, very good suggestions and Arif uh, uh, pointed out a, a, a problem with the March 2nd minutes I believe the vote was correct, but I think we might want to go back and correct the minutes on the uh, Minuteman budget. Would you make a motion for that so we have a record that the minute that they were reconsidering and correcting the minutes that since we already voted? Uh, yeah, I'd like this to be a, a change for the March 2nd minutes. Uh, the recorded vote was 22,395,741, which was the entire uh, assessment. And Arlington's assessment was 7,947,939. So I'd like to just change the number of the minutes from the big number to the smaller number. That answers the question that we second. had. Perfect. Sorry. I'm sorry, Tara, were you saying? I'm, I'm just saying that answers a question that Al Tossi and I were trying to, we were scratching our heads about that. So thank you for, for noticing okay. that. All right. Okay, I Grant, second, I second Grant, motion. It's moved and seconded, yes. Thank you, Um Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Uh, Arif Padaria? Yes. Uh, Makaya, did I ask you your no, but yes. Thank you. Um, so maybe Azo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Um, Daryl. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Wanda. Yes. Christine. Yeah. Dean. Yes. And David. Yes. Thank you. Unanimous vote. Okay. So um, what about the $43,000? Has that, um, was that formally brought to us by the town? But, but a dip, by the, uh, finance we have oh. a lot of emails back and forth on this subject. I don't notice that they're here tonight. Have they asked for us for a, um, a revision? Al Tosti? Yeah, the, um, 
the, the issue is under the OPEB trust fund. Um, the 42 or $43,000 that is used to pay for the management of the OPEB fund um, is, uh, was included in the retirement budget. Uh, the uh, state retirement um, board, I can't remember its name, um, as well as our auditors say that's a town expense that's not a pension expense. Um, I thought it was a retirement expense and could be, it should be under the retirement board. Um, but they argued opposite. Now, I don't know about you, but we're, we're, you know, we just hit the taxpayer over the head for the high school and now we're gonna hit him over the head again with the, uh, uh, with the override in a year or two. Um, and, and I can't see keep spending money uh, that we don't have. So I guess what I would like to suggest is to make a slight change uh, in the article on the OPEB funds. Now, you remember there were three parts to this. Part A was 500,000 from general tax. That was the uh, uh, non-contrib, which we finished eliminating this year. Part B was the 155 from general tax. The board of selectmen voted. And part C was the 300,000 transfer. Now they want us to add the 43,000 to that. We're putting in almost over, almost a million dollars that we don't have to put in. Uh, so what I would like to suggest is we just modify part A to say it not only includes money going into the fund, but to pay for its expenses. So it would read, appropriates into said other post-employment benefits fund, parentheses, OPEB, I'd like to add for investment and its expenses, and then comma authorized, and it goes on to the rest. So we make it clear that this $500,000 that we're putting in uh, into the OPEB is both to be invested and to pay for expenses. There a second on that? Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Any any questions or comments? Jonathan Wallach. Yes, thank you, Charlie. I, I guess I would like a little bit more explanation of what we're voting on here and let and me the, let me try the to, implications. Let me try to answer that question. I, I think I think the uh, retirement board and the, and the deputy town manager were correct that that forty three thousand dollars does not belong in retirement fund. And, th and that's because the, the Arlington Contributory Retirement Board's fiducial responsibility is for the pension fund. The other post-employment benefits that we have been saving up um, is while it's, it's a retirement, um, you know, it's a benefit for retirees, retirees in an indirect sense, it's not directly uh, uh, a, um, by, by law, the responsibility of the Contributory Retirement Board. So I think what the auditors and what Sandy Pooler are saying is that they're, they're in agreement that this is not a retirement, Contributory Retirement Board or the, or the pension fund expense, okay? It's a, it's a different expense. So um, that's, so let's agree, you know, I'm gonna say rhetorically, let's agree that they're correct on that. Then the question is, what do you do with this money? Now, my experience in life with, and, and by the way, I, I tell you this, also my experience with the Arlington Town Pension Fund, is that when you have a fund like this, whether it's your 401k or whether it's an investment fund or a brokerage fund or whatever, the fees come out of the earnings of the fund. They don't, you don't somehow get the fees from somebody else. You don't get a bill in the mail to pay for, well, maybe you do for certain types of funds, but most of the time you're, you know, you're, um, Schwab accounts, your Fidelity accounts, the fees are sort of internally generated and they reduce the earnings that the fund accumulates on your behalf. And, and so what Al's proposal is here is that this $43,000 expense that's incurred gets treated like every other investment fund or investment account. Now, years ago, um, and I, and that, and that time I was edit, I was uh, reviewing the, the, um, pension budget, 
we did pay the expenses out of the town budget. It was a town line item budget every year. And we used to go through the um, retirement board expense and the administrative office expense, et cetera, and vote that as a line item in our um, annual budget. And then, uh, you know, I, I have to go back, as is probably 20 years ago, the state mandated that all of these expenses be transferred into the funds. So the, we, we negotiated at the time an agreement that said, um, we, we go along with that and because we had to, but, but um, in exchange for uh, granting retirees a certain minimal cost of living increase when the rest of the town employees got an increase, that the retirement board would report to the finance committee their operating budget every year, which they have done. We, we see it to make sure that they're you know, living cleanly, but uh, the retirement pension fund is paying for all of those expenses, including the administrators, the various fund managers, everything is contained in that total contributory retirement article. So I think Al Tosti's uh, motion is completely in order. Alan Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You, know, you, you brought up the point that in your Schwab account, the fees tend to be hidden and taken out of the, uh, net, out of the returns. Um, I'm wondering for the sake of transparency, if it might be better in the article to say $457,000 to the funds and $43,000 to management, just so that everybody knows what the management fees are. Um, that would, I think that's a complication that since we don't have, we can't, don't have control over those numbers uh, and they may vary from time to time. I think we should just leave it at the simple expenses. No. Oh, okay. I just, it, it seems to me that the, the town meeting should know what we're paying for management fees for the, that fund, but. But we fine. didn't tell them when it was in the other fund. I understood. Yeah. This would be a, an improvement, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, yeah, I, I, when Schwab hides the fees, they don't I really think they don't it. want you to know what those fees are. I'm not trying to hide the fees. I'm just trying to say that they should be paid by the fund as opposed to by the town. In other words, these fees reduce the earnings on the fund, which is appropriate. It's the way, the way the world works. Understood. But it'd be nice to know what percent, you know, what percentage are, is going to the management. But, um, you know, me, I'm, I'm Mr. Super Ultra Transparency with finances, but I'll, I, I'll leave it go. I'll vote for else motion. OK, let me make a suggestion. Uh, let's figure out for next year how uh, we can get that information reported and managed. It, and then then we can consider earmarking it. Okay. The, the other that, thing that, go ahead. We do is uh, add that to the comment. And in the comment, we could add the current balance in the OPEB fund and the approximate amount of uh, uh, expenses. I agree. Okay, so I think Al's motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any further uh, questions? Who asked that question? That was Jonathan. Did that answer your question, Jonathan? Yes. Okay. I, Al, I, I, oh, go ahead. Who was that? Sorry, I just, I want to, I think I'm close. So the, can you just remind me, so what, what this 40 plus thousand dollars, what it is, the, remind me just of the purpose, who is paying uh, for it, where, where does it coming from now, and where, what would this vote, okay, how we would have, that operation? <laughs> The guy who, who might know the answer to that question is, is uh, Dean Carmen, if he remembers. But we have an outside firm, um, Melita or something Makita. like that. Makita. Makita. Makita? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's so. cool. yeah. Melita is the firm. Makita oh. is the power, power drill. So, uh, you know, the power drill. Maybe. Um, but Melita is this, it's a financial advisory firm, and they invest the money and they, you know, they put it in different accounts and uh, treasury notes and supposedly, you know, secure investments. And um, they charge for that. And that's what the money is for. But remember, it's not just the money, the $500,000 we're putting in. It's the, you know, the $8 million in total that's in there. And, and we had a scandal about um, 
2009, when um, we didn't have a fund, man you know, pe people managing this, it was being managed sort of off the cuff in the town. And um, when we had that financial crisis in 2008 or 2009, that fund lost a million dollars or something like that. Or, you know, there was a big drop in funds and everybody, um, especially the finance committee got very upset about it. So that's what the money's used for. I will uh, check with the retirement materials. I'll find out the uh, last balance in the OPEB fund uh, and the exact amount and purpose of the expenses. Okay, it's in the, uh, it's in the CAFR report, you know, the Comprehensive Annual Financial yeah, okay. Report. Okay, any further questions? Uh, Shane, did that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, we'll take a vote on um, the OPEB trust fund um, to include uh, the language that that um, Tosti recited to us before, which I'm sure our executive secretary has carefully copied down, in um, which will determine that the forty three thousand that's been raised as a question by uh, the finance director is going to come from the fund itself. Um, so I'll going to vote, uh, Grant Gibeon. Vote yes. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Tanya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Arif Padaria. Yes. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Shailene Pokris. So she left. Um, Daryl Harmer. Yes. Andy Court left. Alan Jones. Yes. George Koser. He was not here. I'm sorry. I'm on a different sheet. Uh, Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Juan de Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So. Now, uh, Alan Jones, uh, we have, have we got all of the loose ends tied now on the various numbers? Yes, you mean to, well, we need to vote free cash, right? We need to vote free cash and we need to vote the override stabilization fund. Yep. And, and I, you think all the uh, corrections and feedback, et cetera, from the, um, the budget have been made? I, I believe so. And, uh, you know, frankly, there's always some last minute changes to offsets or things. And that's why Dean Carmen so has the, motion. The Carmen, amend, the, Carmen, the Carmen Amendment to the Constitution. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Al, will you make a motion on the free cash? I move $5,539,215. I'll second that. Into the free cash, which is Article 70? 71. Second. So it's moved and seconded. So uh, just for the record, um, the free cash, for those of us who are newer on the committee, the free, free cash is the money that's left over from, was left over from fiscal year 21. And um, the total amount was 11 million and change, probably $11,080,000 and uh, $430. And the policy that has long been practiced by the finance committee under the direction of uh, our former chairman, Al Tosti, has been to, and, and by the town, has been to uh, take 50% of that money and treat it as revenue in the upcoming fiscal year. And that's what, uh, that's what uh, Alan Jones just moved. And then the balance of the 5 million, an equal amount, $5,539,215, um, is retained uh, in the free in the gen general fund as a as a reserve. Okay, now um, the um, the reason why we're just doing this for fiscal twenty one and not twenty two is because we're still in fiscal twenty two and we won't know how much cash we have left over uh, until the end of the year, and then it has to be certified by the um, 
by uh, DOR, I guess. I don't know exactly who does it, but it has to be certified. And then when it's certified, we know how much it is. So then we can we can keep half of it and we can put half of it into the following fiscal year's budget. Any questions? Been moved and seconded. Okay. Grant Gibbian. Yes. Shane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kai Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Reef Padaria. Yes. Sophie Diazzo. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Helen Jones. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Alan Tosti. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Uh, that's the unanimous vote uh, for $5,539,215. Um, so I think the last article that we have to uh, treat is Article 72. And this is um, the Override Stabilization Fund. Uh, so, um, Alan Jones. I moved 2,946,000 in 037 dollars. 2,946,037. 2, 2,946,037 be moved from the over, override stabilization fund into um, revenues, correct? Correct. Uh, any questions on, well, first of all, is there a second on this motion? Second. second. So it's been seconded. Any questions either on the amount or what's going on? No questions. Okay. Um, we'll move to a vote. Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Ray Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Uh, Daryl Harmer? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George, uh, Bill Keller? Yes. Uh, Al Tasti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? Yes. So uh, unanimous vote for 2,946,000 in 037 dollars. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. 2,946,037. Yeah, okay. So um, thank you very much. Uh, so I just want, you know the balance that's left in the override stabilization fund, Alan? Uh, give me a second. I've got the long range plan here. Uh, after that, it leaves about 16 million or maybe. That sounds high. I guess 9.289 9 million. Okay. Not sure which years this lines up with. But so it runs out in 25. It runs out in 25. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We get another year, I think, another year or two out of that. Okay. Um, so in fiscal 25, we have to have the override pass. We have to have the override pass before fiscal 25, right? Right. Okay. Um, I think that covers all the Warren articles and covers all the budgets. I don't, um, have we voted local option taxes, which is uh, probably no, no action? Thank you. We, we didn't. Let's see. That is article number six. For no action. 66. I move no action. Oh, I'll second action. Grant's motion <laughs> for no action. Okay. So um, article 66 is moved and seconded for no action. Uh, Grant Gibeon. Yes. Jane Blundell. Yes. John Ellis. Yes. Kaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Lee Federia. Yes. Jonathan Migliazzo. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Alan Jones. 
Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tassi. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Dean Deschler. Yeah. Carr, David McKenna. Yes. Okay, so no action on Article 66. Okay, now I think we're complete. Thanks for remi remi reminding me of that. It's right here on the agenda. Okay, um, so we've gone through all the um, budget budgets by number. Uh, we've gone through all the foreign articles that are financial and spent a fair amount of time deciding others were not financial. Um, and I thank everybody for their great work. So we have a um, we have reserved. Uh, is it the thirteenth or the fifteenth? What is it? The Wednesday, the um, the thirteenth. The thirteenth. Wednesday, the thirteenth. Uh, oh, so the week from this coming Wednesday, we're reserved for a possible finance committee meeting, depending upon the um, outcome of the. House Ways and Means Committee on the, on the state budget and state aid. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to try to get the press on the um, Finance Committee report. And then uh, if we don't meet on the 13th, then uh, likely our next meeting is going to be the first night of town meeting. And we will meet uh, every uh, Monday and Wednesday night at 7.30 prior to the town meeting at 8 o'clock. Um, until we until we finish the financial articles, and then I think we probably can pass on that. So, um, so I have one uh, request before we sign off for the night. What time is it? Are we on the schedule here? We are. Yeah, we're ahead of schedule. Wow. So, uh, sir, are we? What's that? We're, we're not having a meeting Wednesday, and we're not having a meeting Monday. Just to be clear. We're not having a meeting yes. this, this Wednesday the 6th and not this Monday the 11th, correct? Correct. Okay, great, thank you. So um, we need a, a subcommittee to, um, or a working group, I should say, to organize our breakup dinner. Um, and I'm looking for volunteers. Al Tassi, you have your hand up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, that, I was good. I was going to ask about the special town meeting if there's anything we could do. Um, well, we have. I think we'll leave that for the 13th. We have uh, we got a uh, preliminary um, a preliminary uh, draft warrant, and there are there are two financial articles in that one which we discussed uh, extensively which is the transfer of the $1,095,000 that was not used for the uh, school department's student growth um, budget last year. To move that to the, um, uh, to the um, override stabilization fund that we just took money out of, um, which if we don't do that, it'll go into free cash and then it can't be used for, for uh, next year's revenue. Um, and then the second, there's a second item, item um, uh, just slipping my mind here, but it's an, it's an eminent domain item. And um, the informal information that I got from both um, Doug Heim and Sandy is that um, it's going to be funded by the state. And so we're going to have to take a position on it, but it's not going to cost the town money directly. I, 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 I think I sent the draft pouring out to you. I just can't remember what the subject was. So we will have to take a position on those two articles. But I think um, we can, if maybe on the 13th, we'll just convene a quick meeting to, um, to do that. But I, I don't, I think the, uh, the warrants only being reviewed by the um, Board of Selectmen tonight. So uh, we don't really know the status of that warrant. Okay. I don't, think, I don't think there's anything else in that article that's financial. I'm sorry, in that warrant that's financial. Okay. Any other questions or issues, subject matter to bring up? Okay. Let, let's go back to the question I had. Um, we need to have a um, a volunteer group 
to to work on the um, breakup dinner. Do I see? I don't see any hands. Um, John Ellis, what do you think? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Al. I'll volunteer. Oh, thank you. So we have one volunteer. We need another volunteer. I, John Ellis, are you going to volunteer? No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, one, of the, one of the questions is, do we do it like last year at somebody's house where we're sort of outside and spread around, or do we go to a restaurant? Let's, let's hold that off. We have time to think about that. And yep. we have a little bit better understanding of where we are. And if we decide to go to a restaurant or whatever, we, that we can decide that to be outside too. So I think it would be nice if we had another one or two people working on this. Um, Shane? Oh, there's hands going up. I see hands going up. <laughs> okay, Micaiah, your hand is up. Sophie, your hand. Okay, we have three people, good. So Tara will probably be leading most of the charge on this, but uh, thank you very much for volunteering. I hope I didn't put you under too much pressure. <laughs> no, it's only because I want to work with Sophie and Al. And Kai, you worked on this last hey. I think you did. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. I think uh, everybody's really been great this year. It's been good, good effort. We have a little more work to do on the, on the, um, get the, get the finance committee report out, but thank you very much for your, your diligence, your, your, your attention to all of the details and your hard work. So um, motion to adjourn is in order. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Hearing no objection, we're adjourned. Thank you very much.